This question once again asks us to draw some loose structures for different ions or molecules. I'm not going to do all of the ones from the question, but I'll do a couple here for you to see, and I'll let you try the others on your own. This one right here is N3-. minus. This might have been a typo on my part. I want you to note that this is not the same thing as this. This is three different atoms of nitrogen bonded together with it, one extra electron in the system. This is a single atom of nitrogen that has three electrons added to it. Hopefully that makes sense, that these are different. So these are not the same. Nitrogen by itself has five valence electrons because it's in column 5 of A of the periodic table. You have, uh, I've got a charge of negative 3 there, which means there have been three extra electrons added to the system. You add that up, that equals 8. So the Lewis structure of that particular ion is just that. I've got eight electrons around it. And if I want, and I typically do this, I'll write a set of brackets and a 3 minus. Sometimes uh, chemists do that a little bit shorter, and they'll just write a single bracket up here. Same thing. In the second problem, I've got antimony uh, pentafluoride. So the first step, once again, is I need to count up how many valence electrons I have. Antimony is in column 5 of the periodic table, so there are five valence electrons in antimony. Fluorine's in column 7A, so there are seven valence electrons there, and there are five individual fluorines, so I'm going to add them all together. That ends up giving me uh, 40 total valence electrons to play with in this molecule. So next thing I need to do is figure out how they're going to be bonded together. Generally speaking, the least electronegative atom, in this case antimony, is the one in the center. The exception is, of course, hydrogen. We don't have any hydrogens to worry about here. So I'm going to put antimony in the center, and then I'm going to put bonds out to fluorines. There are five fluorines in this case. Uh, and what I've done here is I've used up now 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 valence electrons. I have 30 left to play with because I've just taken away 10 from my 40. I'm going to throw all of the uh, extra electrons on my fluorines until I run out and see what it looks like. So I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. So that Lewis structure right there, um, try and circle it so that it's kept separate from my gibberish over here, uh, has full octets on all the fluorine atoms. You'll notice, however, that this antimony right here does not have an octet. It has two, four, six, eight, ten electrons around it. That is the total number of electrons in this system, and that is the only way I can put all these atoms together unless I start violating octet rules with the fluorines. Now, generally speaking, we don't like to violate octet rules. However, you can violate octet rules when there's no other choice, particularly for elements that are in column or uh, row 3 or below of the periodic table. The reason is because those elements have higher orbitals that have the ability to contain more electrons than just your 8 electrons that you normally see with the uh, lower rows. So this is a case where antimony, the central atom, does violate the octet rule, and the reason is because there is no other way you can get all 40 electrons into that system without violating that, the octet rule on the, uh, the peripheral fluorines, which you're not going to want to do.